Hey guys, welcome to Coding Spot and welcome back to a new tutorial. In this video, I'll show you how to code the classic Simon game using React.js. We're gonna be using Tailwind CSS to style our game and React hooks to give some logic to it. Okay, so if you have never played the Simon game before, it's just basically a memory game. So let me show you. Once I click on the play button, computer is going to choose one of the four colors at random and it's gonna highlight it. Once it's finished, it's my turn to start memorizing or clicking the same sequence of colors. So in this case, computer choose the green color, so I'm gonna click it. This starts to get much more interesting level by level as the sequence starts to increase each time by one color. The idea of the game is obviously to memorize the longest sequence of colors. So, as I told you, we're gonna be using Tailwind CSS to style our game and React hooks to give it some logic. If you haven't worked with this before, don't worry, this game is a beginner-friendly project for you to understand these things a little bit more. So, with that being said, let's start coding. So, go ahead and open the text editor you like the most. In my case, I'm gonna be using Visual Studio Code. So make sure to open the folder where you're going to code the Simon game. And once you have your folder open on the text editor, open the terminal and just type npx create hyphen react hyphen app. And I'm gonna type a dot to indicate that I want the project to be created inside this folder. So once it's finished, we're gonna have the initial structure of a React application. So the first thing we wanna do is actually to delete some files that we are not gonna use and basically just set up the initial structure of our Simon game. So we're gonna start with the public folder. I'm gonna delete these files, these four files, and inside of the index HTML, I'm going to delete these comments also this one, I'm going to delete this link and these comments and I'm going to change the title to Simon Game and that's it. Now inside the source folder we're going to delete the app.css, the app tests, the logo SVG, the report web vitals and the setup tests. And now we're going to go inside the index.js and we're gonna delete all these. We're going to delete also this line of code and we're gonna take the index.css and put it at the bottom of the import statements. Now we can close the index.js and inside the index.css go ahead and delete all of these. Now as I told you we're gonna use Tailwind CSS instead of the normal CSS to style our game, our Simon game. But we're gonna make an exception because we wanna add some global styles to our game. So for now, make sure to target the all tag and inside of the curly braces, go ahead and type margin zero and padding zero. We wanna do this because we wanna add our own margin and our own padding to all of the components inside of our game. Now for now we can go ahead and close this file and now we can go inside of the app.js. Right here we want to delete this first line of code and we want to delete all these, also the class name and for now I want to type hello world. Of course here we're gonna have our game component but for now we're gonna leave this div. Now I almost forgot that we also need to delete this line of code as we don't have an app.css file. Next thing we want to do is actually install Tailwind CSS into our project. So let's go to Google and let's type Tailwind CSS. Once you are inside the page, go ahead and click on the documentation section. Now right here we're gonna copy these two lines of code and we're gonna paste it right here. I'm gonna hit enter and I'm gonna wait for it to install. 
once it has been installed we're gonna go to the tailwind page and we're gonna copy these lines of code and we're gonna paste it right here so i'm gonna select all i'm gonna paste it and right here we want to add a jsx file extension because we're working with react and this is the extension of the react files once we have done this we can close this file and the last thing we want to do is actually copy these three lines of code inside of the tailwind page and we're gonna paste it on top of our index.css file and that's all now in order to see if tailwind has been installed correctly on our application we're gonna go to the app.js and we're gonna add the following class name text red 500 so this is a tailwind class so our text right here should have this color which is like a red color so i'm gonna run the application by typing npm start and we're gonna see if tailwind has been installed correctly so as you can see let me zoom in a little bit we have the hello world but with a red color so that's how we know that tailwind is working correctly okay so i'm actually going to put the code right here and our simon game right here to start seeing the changes so we're gonna start by creating a new folder inside of our source folder we're gonna call it components and inside this folder we're gonna create a new component called simon game so for now i'm gonna use the following shortcut to create our component and we're gonna import it inside of our application. So right here, go ahead and import the Simon game from the components folder slash Simon game. And instead of having this div, we can have our Simon game component. So now we should see, let me zoom in a little bit, we should see Simon Game being rendered on screen. Okay, for now we can close the app.js file and we can focus on our Simon Game component. So I want to start giving a brief introduction of what Tailwind CSS is. If you already know what Tailwind CSS is, you can skip this part. So basically, Tailwind CSS is going to let us style our components without the need of CSS files. So instead of creating a new file and targeting a specific ID or class or tag, we can just add a Tailwind class and this will style our components. So for example, if I want to search information about the background property, the background color property, I'm gonna I'm gonna type on the search bar background color and I'm gonna search it and right here at the left we can see all the tailwind classes and here at the right we can see the corresponding CSS property so this is pretty pretty cool now for example if I want to make my application to be red I can go search for a red color for example BG red 500 and right here I can add a new class name called bgred500 I can give a screen width and screen height and we should see our application going red so that's pretty cool okay so for now we can continue with the with the game I just wanted to give that brief introduction to Tailwind because we're gonna style all of our components with Tailwind classes so let's start coding our Simon game component. Okay, so I want to show you our component structure. So let me choose a, I don't know, red color right here. Okay, so we're going to have our main component. Let me put this right here, right? We're going to have our container, our main container, I'm sorry. And right here at the center, we want to have our game. So right here, we're going to have our Simon game. So in order to center things like this, we need to use a flex property 
and we want to justify center for the x-axis and then we want to item center for the y-axis so let me show you right here I want to add a new class name we're going to use the following background so it will be BG neutral 800 we're going to give a full screen this is neutral we're going to give a full screen width and a full screen height and then we want to add the flex property or the flex class name also the justify center and the item center as I told you now I'm gonna show you that this works so I'm gonna put text white to show you and I'm gonna type hello world from the center and as you can see we have the hello world from the center we have our text on the center of our screen awesome so I'm gonna delete this and now as I show you let me delete this so we have our main container and right here we want to have our game so our game if you remember is going to have let me change of color is going to have a green button then we're going to have a red button then we are going to have a yellow button right here and then we want to have a blue button right here so let me let me explain let me show you how we want to structure this container so this is going to be a flex but also it's going to be a flex column why because we want our containers or, or our children inside of the container to be one on top of each other now obviously these two bottoms are going to be one container and these two other bottoms are going to be another container that way the flex column is going to work and that's basically all we need to know for now so I'm gonna delete these drawings and let's start coding it so I'm gonna put some comments here this is gonna be the main container let me actually make this a little bit smaller and let me make this a little bit bigger I think a little bit more so probably here is okay yeah nice so right here I'm gonna put the buttons or actually the game container this is going to be the game container so as I told you we're gonna have a diff with the following class names so we're gonna have a flex flex call justify center item center and that's it now inside of here we want to have the green and red container and also we want to have the yellow and the blue container so these are gonna be diffs like this and these divs are not going to have any classes okay as we know we're gonna have four buttons four identical buttons except for the color we can create a component for it so instead of creating four buttons and adding all the class names we can create like a mother class a mother component and we can basically render it four times so let me show you on our components folder we want to create a new file called game btn dot jsx I'm gonna type the shortcode to have our component now we can import that component inside of our Simon game component so we import game btn from slash game btn awesome so I'm gonna call the component four times so I'm gonna type game btn I'm gonna duplicate it and I'm gonna copy these two and I'm gonna paste it right here so as you can see we have our four game buttons components this is looking like this because this should be a button instead of a diff now once I change it to a button you can see we have 
the structure that we wanted. So let's start giving some classes to our button. This can actually be a, a self-closing tag because we don't want to type anything inside of the button. So I'm going to add some class names. So we're going to be receiving some props, obviously, because we want buttons to be a little bit different as we want them to be different in color, also in the border radius that we're giving to the bottom and so on, so on. Now, if you haven't worked with props, it's pretty simple. Just think of this component as a function because it's actually a function and we're going to receive some parameters. So I'm going to open these curly braces and we're going to receive some parameters. So we're going to receive the border. You'll see what I'm talking about in a minute. We're also receiving a background and an onClick function that we're going to be coding later on the video, on the tutorial. But for now, we can actually give the onClick function to our button. This onClick function is going to be responsible or is going to be called each time we click on a game button component. Now inside of our class names, I'm actually going to change these quotation marks to curly braces and this type of quotation marks in order to add some JavaScript to it or actually to add our props to it. So I just want you to know that this border and this background are gonna be Tailwind CSS classes. So we can basically just put them right here. So you just need to target the dollar sign with some curly braces and then type the, the, the prop. So I wanna do this, I wanna do that with the border and also with the background for now. Now we can add the common classes that all of our game button components are going to have. So we want it to have a width of 175 pixels and to make it responsive, we're gonna make this just to be 175 pixels on small devices but if we're working on medium or greater devices, we are going to have the following width, 200 pixels. We're going to do the same with the height. So we're going to have a height of 175 pixels, but on devices that are greater to the small dimension, we're going to have a height of 200 pixels. And I want to give some margin to it. So I'm going to type margin two, And this is going to style our button. So now you're not going to see anything, of course, because we haven't passed the props right here. So for the first button, which is the green button, so I'm going to start giving the, the background for you to see that it actually works. We're going to give it a background of BG green 500. And as you can see, we have our first button being rendered on the screen. Now I'm going to actually duplicate these four times I'm gonna delete our previous components and I'm gonna put them right here like this as you can see we have four green bottoms but we want to have the green one we want to have the red button also uh, right here is going to be the yellow one and then we want to have the blue one so just change these for red. This one we're gonna use yellow but 400 because I think it looks much better. And for blue, we're gonna just use blue 500. So if I save, we can see our four bottoms being rendered on screen. Now, we wanna add some borders to it, some border style. We don't wanna have these boring squares bottoms. We want to have our bottoms like a quarter of a circle. So let me show you something like this. Something like this for the green, something like this for the red, uh, this for the yellow, and this for the blue. And this will look much more nice. So let's go ahead and do that. So we need to pass the border uh, prop so for the green, the border prop is going to be rounded top left because we want the top and the left to be a rounded full. So it will be rounded top left full. 
if I save, you can see we have this awesome, awesome button. Now I'm gonna copy this, and I'm gonna paste it right here, and we're gonna change this to top right. Awesome. I'm gonna paste it for the yellow one. This will be bottom left. There we go. And then I'm gonna paste it for the blue button, which is gonna be bottom right. So BR, awesome. So we have this awesome, awesome looking uh, Simon game. Now, once I hover on the bottoms, I want to have like an animation. So let me show you. Inside of our game button component, right here, we're gonna add the following class names. Duration 200 and hover. We're gonna target the hover uh, property and we're gonna scale it to 105. So this is basically going to delay our hover and this is actually making the button a little bit bigger. So let me show you. Now if we hover on our bottoms, we have this awesome, awesome effect. So pretty, pretty nice. Next thing we wanna add is actually the play button right here on the center. So I'm gonna call it play button. It's gonna be a button and we're gonna give it the following class names. So we're gonna go ahead and add some background. So it will be PG neutral 900, text white, text XL, but on greater, on bigger devices, we want it to be text 2XL, font bold, rounded full, width of 150 pixels, but on greater devices, we wanted to have it um, of 175 pixels, same with height, so 150 pixels. On greater devices, we want it to be 175 pixels. And we want to add the same effect of our playing buttons. So duration 200, and on hover, we want to scale it 105 there we go so for now you can see we have the playing bottom right here on the bottom we want it to be on the center so i'm actually i'm actually going to add the text so play for now and this will be our playing button now in order to put it on the center we need to do two things first thing is to make the game container to be relative so right here go ahead and type relative and then the second thing we want to do is actually make this button absolute. So absolute. And this is going to center our button, our playing button pretty, pretty nice. Okay, so we have basically finished our, our game style. So we literally style our game and we can continue with the logic of our game. So as you can see, if we click on any of the bottoms, nothing is going to happen so that's what we're going to be working next we're gonna give it some logic so in order to implement the logic of the game we are gonna be using react hooks now if you haven't worked with hooks before don't worry i'm gonna try my best to explain them it's not gonna be hard at all so don't worry about it now to use hooks we want to import them so Right here on the first import statement, we want to import the following hooks. We're going to import the use state hook, the use ref hook, and the use effect hook. So as I told you, I'm going to be explaining each of these um, hooks. These are probably the easiest uh, hooks in React. So don't worry, it's not going to be hard at all. Okay, so we're gonna start by showing the sequence. We're gonna code the logic to show our sequence, our current sequence. And then we're gonna code the logic, which is gonna check if we are clicking the correct sequence. Okay, so we're gonna start by showing the sequence as I told you. So let's start creating some states. So we're gonna start using the use state hook. I just want you to think of states as local variables 
So they are basically going to be variables that we are gonna use inside of our Simon game component and that each time a specific state or variable changes, our component is gonna re-render, okay? Okay, so how do you create a, a use state? We're gonna type the following. So let me show you. You're gonna type the const word, then some brackets equal to the use state. So this right here. So inside of these brackets, we're gonna put the name of our state or of our variable, and then we're gonna give it a setter, a set function. So our first state is gonna be the sequence. This is actually the sequence of colors that we are gonna have and a set sequence. Right here, inside of the use state function or constructor, we can have a default value. So for the sequence, we're gonna use an empty array. Now, before we continue coding, we're gonna create a new array. This can be outside of our component because it will never change. It will be the array of colors. So const colors is gonna be equal to, so we're gonna have green, we're gonna have yellow, I'm sorry, red. Then we're gonna have yellow. And then we're gonna have blue. Awesome. Now the second state that we are gonna create is a state, a Boolean value that is gonna be called playing. So as I told you, we type the name and then the setter, which is basically just set and the name of our, of our state, okay? So playing, set, playing, and this is gonna be uh, equal to false as default. Okay, so we're gonna start, I'm actually going to close these containers, and we're gonna start adding the onclick function to our play button. So right here, go ahead and type onclick equals, I'm gonna call it handle next level, and now we need to create that function. So right here, I'm gonna put a comment functions and it's gonna be handle next level. It's gonna be a narrow function. Now let's think what we wanna do inside of that handle next level uh, function. So the first thing we wanna check is actually if we are not playing. Why? Cause we just wanna click on the playing button if we are not playing, right? So if not playing, we are going to add a new color, which is gonna be a new function that we're gonna create on a moment. So we're gonna add a new color to our sequence of colors, right? So right here, we wanna create a new function called add new color. It's gonna be also an, uh, a narrow function. And this is gonna be pretty, pretty simple. So the first thing we wanna do is actually select a random color. And we can do this by accessing our colors array. And the index should be something like math.floor. I'm gonna actually type it. So math.floor, open brackets, math.random, which is gonna give us a number between zero and one. And this is gonna be times the length of our colors array. So in this case, four. So this is gonna basically give us a, uh, an index. So this right here is gonna give us an index between zero and three. And that way we can choose a random color because this array has index values from zero to three. Nice. So now we can continue with our function. Once we have that color, we wanna create a new sequence, which is gonna be equal to the copy of our previous sequence. So you can do this in JavaScript as this. So three dots, then type the state. So in this case, sequence, comma, and the new color. So we're basically pushing the new color, the random color to our sequence, to our new sequence. So once we have a new sequence, we can actually set our current sequence to be the new sequence. And that's all. So pretty, pretty simple function. Now we're gonna be using our second uh, hook, which is gonna be the use effect hook. So I'm gonna explain what use effect is. So right here, I'm gonna put a comment. This is our use effect. 
so it will be something like this use effect and inside of the use effect we're gonna pass an arrow function and as second parameter we're gonna pass something that's called a dependency array so let me explain use effect receives a function and this function is gonna be executed once something inside this dependency array changes so in our case if the sequence changes we want to execute this function and that function is going to be the show sequence function okay so i'm going to recap once we click on the play button we're going to call this function that is going to check if we are not playing and if so we're going to add a new color to our sequence now once we add the random color to our sequence our sequence uh, state is going to change and that will target the use effect hook because we have the sequence state inside of the dependency array and once we target this we're gonna execute this show sequence function that we are gonna code right now so we're gonna start typing const show sequence we are creating a function inside of the of the use effect function so this is going to be also a narrow function and we are going to call it right here at the bottom of the use effect now before we continue with this function we need to use we need to start using our third and final hook which is the use ref so i'm gonna i'm gonna explain why that hook is useful so i'm gonna i'm gonna put a comment refs so the use ref hook is going to let us reference each of the bottoms that we have so we are going to reference all of our color bottoms on the game and why do we need to reference them because when we are showing the sequence we need to target each of the well, of the of the bottoms of the sequence in order to highlight it right so we can do that with refs so let me explain we're gonna type const green ref we're gonna create four refs one for each color and this is gonna be our use ref and as default we're gonna have null so we're gonna do this four times this is gonna be red ref yellow ref and blue ref there we go now we need to somehow link these refs with the actual bottoms right so right here inside of these containers we are gonna send a ref as a prop well actually refs are a little bit different than props i'm gonna show you but for now you can assume that is a prop because it's actually the same syntax we we write ref equals to the actual ref so in this case it's gonna be the green ref this one is going to have the yellow ref This one is going to have the, uh, oh, I'm sorry. This is the red ref, yellow ref, and finally the blue ref. There we go. Now we need to receive those refs inside of our game BTN component, right? Now, as I told you, refs are a little bit different than props so we cannot add the ref right here it's not going to work so in order to receive a ref we need to use a function that we're going to import also from react that is called forward ref now we need to change our component to be a narrow function so go ahead and type const game btn it's going to be equal to the forward ref function right here and inside we're gonna add a new pair of brackets then we're gonna add the arrow function I'm gonna change the curly braces to be normal um, brackets and we will not need the return statement so uh, let me see I'm missing something I did I think this is double parentheses double brackets yeah um, yeah awesome so okay we're having a problem because we're not receiving the ref but for now make sure the well your component your game bdn component looks something like this so we just change it to be a narrow function and we're using the forward ref function 
Now, inside of these pink brackets, or in my case, pink brackets, I'm going to add a new parameter, which is going to be called ref. And now it should work our game. Now, this ref, we're going to add it to the bottom. So this is going to be ref equals the ref prop right here. And you don't have to worry about this ref. This is a this is an attribute that all HTML or React elements have. So we're just saying, okay, reference what we are sending. Awesome. So I think we can close here. Uh, make sure we are sending the the correct ref for each uh, bottom, for each color button. And once we have these, we can continue with our uh, show sequence function. Awesome. So the show sequence function is going to receive an index, which is going to be by default equal to zero. This index is going to tell our function what color, right? What color of the sequence state we are going to show. So that's why we need this to be to start at zero. So we're going to show the first color of the sequence. Then we're going to use recursion to call again the show sequence, but adding a plus one to this index and so on, so on until we reach the end of our sequence. I hope I'm being clear. If not, let's start coding and it should be much more clear. So we're going to start by creating a new a new variable that I'm going to call ref. And we're going to ask, OK, so if the index right that we are sending of the sequence state is actually equal to green, because remember, our sequence state is going to have colors as strings. So if we have the green color, we're going to set the ref to be equal to the green ref. I'm going to copy paste these four times and we're going to change the, the colors. So Instead of green, we're going to use red here, then yellow. And then we want to use the uh, blue one. OK. So here we're basically accessing the bottom that we need to highlight, right? So let's say the first random color that we got was red. So we're basically saying, OK, take the red ref that we are actually sending right here. And now we need to show it. So show the ref or actually highlight. So highlight the ref. So in order to highlight the ref or the button, what I want to do is actually add a delay. And you can add a delay in JavaScript by using the set timeout function. So the set timeout function is going to receive uh, two parameters. The first one is going to be a function and the second one it's going to be the time that you want to delay it. So for me, it's going to be 250 milliseconds. This is going to be in milliseconds. And inside of this function, so after 250 milliseconds, we want to do the following. We want to access our ref. So this variable right here, we're going to access something called the current. This will actually give us the button that we are talking about. Okay. We can access something called class list, which are all the classes of our ref. And we're going to add a new class called brightness 2.5. This is a tailwind class that is going to make our bottom be brighter. So this is going to make the effect that is being highlighted. Um, but now after we highlight it, we want to actually remove this class, right? So we were going to add a new delay. So a new set timeout function, which is going to happen after 250 milliseconds. And we're going to do basically the same, but removing it. So remove brightness 2.5. There we go. So I want to actually show you that this works. So right here, I'm going to click on play and nothing is happening. Oh, it's because I misspelled the current. Should be that. Oh, yeah. I saw the, the highlight. Okay, so I'm going to click play. And as you can see, we got the blue one. If I click play again, it's going to show us the blue one also. Why? Because we are just doing this with the first color. 
but we want to do it with all of our sequence, right? So inside of this set timeout function, so after we remove the brightness to the color, we want to check if the index that we are talking about is actually less than the sequence state dot length minus one. And if this is true, we can use recursion to show the sequence, but now with the index plus one. So I hope that's clear. Let me actually show you what this does. So if I click play, it's gonna show us just one color, okay? If I click play again, it's gonna show us two colors. In this case, it was two green, and this is just awesome. So if I, I'm gonna click it again, two greens, one yellow, again, two greens, one yellow, and one blue. This is just awesome. Now, we shouldn't be able to click play like a lot of times, right? We, we just wanna click play when we are starting a new game. So that's because inside of this, if not playing on the inside the handle next level function, before we add a new color, we wanna set the playing to false. I am sorry, to true because we are we are starting a new game. So now it should not let us uh, we'll actually click this again. Awesome, this is working fine. Okay, now this is going to work, but React is gonna give you a, an error because he's gonna try on the first render of our game to access sequence at the index zero. And as you know, sequence, by default, the default value of sequence is going to be an empty array, so we cannot access it. So make sure to wrap all these inside an if statement that is going to check if the sequence.length is actually greater than zero. So I'm going to put this inside of that if statement, and this should work fine. Awesome, we have it. So we basically finish with the logic of showing the sequence. Now, before we start uh, coding the logic of clicking the, the correct sequence, I wanna change this text. So as you can see, it always says play, but I wanna change it to the level, to the current level. So right here, I'm gonna open these curly braces and I'm gonna ask, okay, is the sequence length equal to zero? If this is true, I wanna render the text play. If this is not true, I wanna render the actual sequence length. Oh, uh, this is sequence length. There we go. So once I click play, we should see the level. This is just awesome. If I refresh the page, we should see the play text because our sequence length is equal to zero. So pretty, pretty nice. Okay, so I'm gonna close the use effect uh, hook and I'm actually going to close the handle next level because we finished with that. Also, I'm gonna close the add new color and we're gonna start coding a new function that I'm gonna call handle color click. It's gonna be an arrow function. And as you know, our game bottom um, component has this prop, which is an onClick uh, function. So we're gonna send it. So right here, we're gonna add, uh, actually is the same function for all of our buttons. So I'm actually going to select all and I'm gonna put onClick equals the name of the function that we just created. So let's go to the function right here. This function is gonna receive as parameter the event. So we don't have to send these, this event uh, when we call the function. This is, we are receiving this by default uh, because of JavaScript. So don't, don't worry about this, this parameter. Now, inside of this handle color click function, the first thing we wanna do is actually ask if we are playing. We don't wanna be able to click a color if we are not playing, right? So that's the first thing we wanna check. Second thing we wanna do is actually get the color that we click. So right here, I'm gonna create a new function called color. Actually, I'm gonna call it click 
uh, color. This is going to be equal to the e dot target. So the event dot target. This is going to give us uh, one button, the button that we clicked. Dot get attribute, and we are gonna access the attribute color. We need to create this attribute. But basically, what we're doing here is we are getting the color attribute from the bottom that we clicked. Okay, so we need to add this color attribute for each of our buttons. So right here, when we call our game button component, we're going to send a new prop called color, and it's going to be literally the name of the color. So make sure the names that you are sending correspond to these names right here okay so green for the first one red for the second one yellow for the third one and blue for the final component now we need to receive that prop so right here i'm going to type color and we are going to add a new attribute a custom attribute to this button so this will be color equals color this is the custom attribute and this is our prop awesome so once we have that we're actually getting the the, the color of the of the bottom that we clicked and now I want you to think about the logic so we want to see we want to check if we're actually clicking the correct color of the sequence okay so you can try this by your own i'm gonna do it my way but i'm sure there are plenty of ways to do this so i'm gonna start by creating a new state which is gonna be a playing index i'm gonna give it the setter and this is gonna start at zero okay now right here we want to check so if we click the correct color of the sequence so if sequence on the playing index this is this playing index is going to increment each time we click a color okay so if this is equal to the click color it means that we clicked the correct so let me actually put clicked the correct color of the sequence now right here we're, we're gonna add an else and this is clicked incorrect so click the incorrect color of the sequence awesome so for now i'm gonna comment the function that we are gonna be calling here which is gonna be called reset game and for now, I'm going to alert something like you lost. Nice. Okay. So now we need to check, okay, what happened if we click the correct color of the sequence? And inside of this, we're going to have two cases. So the first case is going to be when we finished with the, actually, I'm going to put clicked the last color of the sequence and we can code this by asking okay is the playing index so playing index equals to the sequence dot length minus one right if not we're gonna add a nail statement and this means we are missing some colors to be clicked so missing some colors of the sequence to be clicked so if we are missing some colors of the sequence this is pretty easy we just need to set the plane index to be the plane index plus one so we're basically incrementing the plane index now as we are incrementing this at one point we're gonna finish right here inside of this if statement now inside of this we want to do the following we want to add the delay a delay of 250 milliseconds so remember after 250 milliseconds we are gonna execute this function and we want to first of all set our plane index to be equal to zero 
because we're going to be starting like a new level, right? And then we can add a new color. So we are reusing the function that we have here. So let me recap. Okay, let's say we click the last color of the sequence. I'm assuming we click the correct color of the sequence also. So once we click it, we are having a delay of 250 milliseconds. We are restarting the playing index and we're adding a new color. Now, adding a new color is going to add a new random color to our sequence. And once the sequence changes because of this dependency array, we're going to execute the function inside of the use effect, which actually shows the sequence that we already did this. So pretty, pretty cool. And if we try it, this should work properly. So we have the blue one. I'm going to I'm going to lose. I'm going to start by losing. So I'm going to click the green one. Awesome. We have the alert. You lost. Now I'm going to refresh the page. So we have the green one. I'm going to click green. Awesome. Now we have green and blue. Awesome. This is just nice. And we have a big part of our code. I'm going to lose again. This is just pretty pretty awesome we're almost finished we need to restart when we when we actually lose so i'm gonna uncomment this uh you can leave the the alert but i'm, I'm gonna actually comment it and we're gonna call the reset function which is gonna be a new function right here reset game arrow function and right here we just want to reset our state that's all so set sequence uh, we're going to set our states to be equal to the default value uh, that we have right there. Now, set playing is going to be equal to false and set playing index is going to be equal to zero. Pretty, pretty nice. So now, if I play and let's say I lose, you can see this play button is being reset. Why? Because remember, we have right here that if the sequence length is equal to zero, go to play or render play. If not, render the level, right? Um, and we are making inside of the reset game function, the sequence length to be equal to zero, right? So, okay, that's pretty much all. I wanna add just one more thing and it's gonna be the following. So I want to give the effect that I'm actually clicking um, one of these buttons, right? So how can we do that? It's pretty, pretty easy. So inside of the handle color click, I'm going to add the following line. So e.target.classList.add and we're going to add opacity 50. This is a tailwind class that is going to make our button to be darker okay and now we want to add a delay to remove uh well that class so it's going to be a delay so after 250 milliseconds we are going to put all this code that we have right here inside of the set timeout function but before we execute uh well that code we want to actually remove um that class opacity 50 so we remove opacity 50 and this will make the effect or the illusion that we're actually clicking uh well the button okay so let me show you i'm gonna click play awesome effect double yellow uh there we go oh my god triple yellow there we go let's see Okay, we have a blue one now. And this is working just fine, guys. If we lose, this actually restarts. So this is just pretty, pretty nice. This is a perfect clone of the Simon game. So we literally finish our game, guys. This was pretty fun to code. I hope you learn about these hooks. If you didn't know anything about them, this was a perfect, perfect project to start working with the user state hook, with the use ref hook, use effect hook. Um, 
and try to do this project on your own again and you will see you start to understand much better the use rev the use state and the use effect so yeah guys i i hope you like this video i hope you like this tutorial if you're liking the content please leave a like please subscribe if you're not subscribed comment down below what's your record so yeah guys thanks for watching and i'll see you on the next video